Hi, so I'm here to demonstrate the um, the Nikon TTL flash systems like the OEM flashes compared to the Nikon compatible third party flashes um, particularly the Godox brand and the Flashpoint brand uh, the Flashpoint is just a Godox rebranded by Andorama so um, I'm gonna show like a, a like a simple demonstration of why it is worth it at least for TTL flash to pay for the expensive price that Nikon demands for their flash system again I'm not saying that the Godox line of flashes are are bad in fact I use it for like you know manual flash and multi-flash systems but it's just that for anything that requires TTL and in particular the Nikon ITTL balance flash system I've I've yet to come across uh, something that came close to what Nikon flashes provides out of the box so um, in this video, uh, I mean in this comparison that we're going to do, um, we'll be using the Nikon Z6 first generation with the um, Nikon 24-200 to uh, VR lens, which is an excellent lens by the way. I just acquired this recently. I'm probably going to talk about that in another video, but uh, let's focus, I guess. So for the ones that we're going to compare is the um, the Flashpoint Nikon R2, which is you know the Godox brand as sold through Adorama. We also have the Godox uh, V1 um, N, uh, the one compatible with Nikon um, TTL. We have the SP700, currently cost like around $350 I think brand new I got this refurbished so I paid cheaper and then last but not the least the um, the, the the one that's currently available the, the the smallest and the cheapest Nikon SP300 so um, we'll we'll just have one sample right so we're gonna go through um, each and one of these and like three attempts and just to also not only show how it performs but how it performs consistently consistently or inconsistently and um, we'll draw the conclusions at the end of the video okay so now we're here um, in Lightroom I just imported uh, 13 shots three shots for each of those four flashes and the one with no flash at all so this is that um, photo without the flash so this is what you're seeing here is a severely backlit um, Harry Potter statue um, so this is one of those things where um, it doesn't matter how much dynamic range or how much how noise free the sensor is this is just one of those things that it that that's cannot really just be salvaged by um, adjusting or boosting the the shadows or salvaging the highlights it doesn't matter how how good your software it doesn't matter how I mean, technology is not there yet um, so like here I could show you right so if I just do auto like boost the exposure um, and the shadows um, see here there's just like you know the, the the noise reduction is in full effect you see that grain that's usually not present for something that ISO 100 so this is to me like you know this is somewhat unacceptable 
um, if you're trying to achieve a a high quality image with a backlit um, um, lighting um, I know this this sample is a bit contrived but like you know I just wanted to show uh, then like you know how how Nikon's IT tail like really shines in this kinds of um, lighting situation all right so let's uh, let's begin so this one is um, like you know the shot from the flash point um, flash the, the small one uh, as you can see it's like you know the the um, it's pretty much over like you know the highlights are pretty much gone because of the TTL not really working out of the box um, so it's not this is not just uh, coincidence it's consistently just overexposing um, this the like you know the flash is just overexposing the subject and this is actually harder I would think because the the subject is off-center now we go to the Godox one um, which is yeah I guess it's um, marginally better but still overexposed you try to recover the highlight it's gone so it's without compensating like you know doing a flash exposure compensation it's you're pretty much um, out of luck the advantage here is at least you, you could you know what to expect and you know what to adjust for these kinds of situation um, so again that's with the Godox uh, V1 now let's go to the SB700 look at that so it's it's not even a contest right so it out of the box without adjusting anything perfect exposure for the Nikon or near perfect so it, it doesn't overblow on the highlights it doesn't it actually provides this this uh, um, image quality as if the the flash wasn't used right so with with that without since you're not boosting the shadows you essentially have that most up op the optimum quality of the sensor and um, since nothing is um, overexposed you have the full range of um, uh, dynamic range of the sensor you could adjust the contrast or what have you and without any perceptible loss of quality um, now you can see that it is also consistent like, you know, I mean, there's some very subtle, like, I guess, change in between shots, but from the naked eye, it's imperceptible. Um, you could see that it's fairly consistent overall. So here you can actually now, you could compare to the, like, you know, this, the Godox here. It's not even a contest. So in, in out of box situation like you know minimal um, interference like you know with how the the camera operates with the flash it's hard to um, go wrong with using with Nikon and then lastly we have the SB300 and as you can see 
because it's a Nikon flash without any adjustment since the SB300 doesn't allow the adjustments anyway on the flash it behaves just like the SB700 and gives the consistent flash performance so um, in conclusion um, if you are dependent on um, the fast pace and having to rely on TTL unfortunately um, compared to the Godox or Flashpoint systems it just doesn't compare it it's still worth it paying that much money for the Nikon brand flashes if you want consistent and um, and good results with with the flash and ambient lighting especially when you're trying to um, capture a severely or like you know challenging light situations like this one where the, the subject is severely backlit 